Penny Hardaway is no doubt one of the most iconic basketball players of all time. I mean, I feel like a lot of people who don't even watch basketball know exactly who you're talking about when you say Penny Hardaway. And he's been in the news a lot recently because he's a famous basketball coach now for the Memphis Tigers. A lot of people talk about him all the time. But how exactly did he get to be this amazing iconic player? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this video. Learn how Anthony became Penny Hardaway. Learn how his grandmother became a amazing guardian for him. Uh, learn about everything else in between. This is Basketball Dive. Penny Hardaway would be nothing without his grandmother, Louise Hardaway. Hardworking, courageous, fearless, and spiritual, Grandma Louise shaped the man we know today as Penny and she is how the story of Penny Hardaway's family truly began. It's not clear when Louise was born, but one of the most notable stories of her life happened in 1943 when she was five months pregnant with her third child. She was walking along the road with her two sons, Lester and John, when three white men hit her in the stomach with a brick, knocking her down. Bleeding and in so much pain, she said to herself, nah, hell nah, and pulled herself up from the ground once her assaulters fled. Her husband, Sylvester, tried to take vengeance after he had heard about the incident, but he couldn't find those terrible men. Thankfully, the baby survived and was named Gloria in an attempt to say glory to God that the baby survived despite that horrible assault. After Gloria, Penny Hardaway's mom, Faye, was born on November 18, 1951, as Louise's fourth child. With a fourth child, Louise and Sylvester were faced with more mouths to feed, but with very little at their disposal. The couple were sharecroppers in Arkansas, working many hours picking cotton, a job that they never wanted to do in the first place, as you might imagine. It was too much hard work for little benefit, and they usually suffered a lot of hand injuries, which could only be suppressed by turpentine. Eventually, Louise and her family couldn't take the hardships anymore and had to leave for a better life. And they did. They moved to a very substandard three-bedroom house at 2977 Forest Avenue in Binghamton, Memphis. It looks like on Google Maps that the house was taken down a while ago, but nonetheless, that's the house where Penny would be born. But first, in 1956, Louise's husband Sylvester left her to cater for all her children alone. Her upgrade from a sharecropper was a maid and nanny, and then later a cook at the Memphis school system. These were the jobs used to raise not just her four children, but also 15 grandchildren and many cousins she helped raise. It's not clear how she managed to do that, but this was how it was outlined in the book, On These Courts, a biography by Wayne B. Drash, a book written about Penny and the people that helped shape him. Nevertheless, as Louise's kids grew, she would be faced with even more challenges, especially from her last-born daughter, Faye. At about 20 years old, Faye had her first and only child, Anthony, or Penny, Hardaway, on July 18, 1971, while still living with her mom, Louise. Penny's father's father's name was Eddie Golden, and Faye was going to name him Golden as a result, but Grandma Louise hit her with her famous Nah Hell Nah. Louise instead wanted him to keep their surname Hardaway. Grandma Louise also named him Penny, but only by accident. The thing is, she usually called him pretty because she thought he was too cute, but her thick southern accent made it sound like Penny, and the name stuck. Faye did choose Penny's first name, Anthony, a name she remembered from a kid in her school in Leicester, Memphis. The name was usually confused with Anthony, but it didn't matter. She loved the name, and that was that. Faye managed to complete high school after her pregnancy in 1972, but being a passionate singer, she decided to pursue that passion for music by leaving home when her son Penny was only five years old. But it would just be Faye that ended up leaving. See, according to that book on these courts, Faye wanted to bring Penny with her on tour, but Grandma Louise was not having it. So Faye would end up going on tours in places like Alaska, California, Hawaii, and she sent postcards with messages to Penny on keeping in touch. But what about Penny's father? Penny's father, Eddie, had already left the family to move to Chicago. When doing research, there isn't really an explanation given as to why he ended up leaving them. He reportedly only met his son a few times when he was still young, and one of those rare meetings was the time he had to come take his son, but Grandma Louise wouldn't let Eddie in, hitting him with another of her famous nah hell nahs. 
Furthermore, as far as A. Golden is concerned, this statement from Penny Hardaway to Wayne Drash when he was writing the book pretty much summarizes everything you need to know about his relationship with the NBA legend. Quote, I met my dad when I was six or seven, then he left. From when I was age five until 18, I had only seen him maybe three or four times. He wasn't present in my life. I really never saw him, but it never really bothered me. I mean, I would wonder every now and then, as any kid would, what my father was doing, wishing my father was here, but I would snap out of it really quickly and just keep doing what I needed to do." End quote. So with his parents away, it was Louise and Penny versus the world. Knowing that the neighborhood they lived in had lots of gang activity, Louise had to make sure that Penny stayed off the streets, and that wasn't too difficult for her to accomplish since she was very strict, going as far as beating him up and that of the other kids with a belt or an extension cord. And aside from her toughness, she was also a very religious woman. Therefore, Penny was raised to know God and to be disciplined. Those were the times, I guess. And Penny never saw any of the beatings as abuse because, according to him, quote, Most people would say that's abuse, but it's really not to me. The old school would beat you for doing wrong, and you'd clean up your act and be afraid to do that again. End quote. I mean, he's entitled to that opinion for sure. Grandma Louise is also the reason why Penny started playing basketball in the first place. Penny initially wanted to play football, but as they watched a game together one day, she pointed out to him how easily he could get injured. She later bought him his first basketball when he was only six years of age. Growing up, Penny also owes Louise for him not ever getting into drinking or smoking. Quote, I've never taken a drink. I've never smoked. Every time I see a kid with drugs, I say, that could have been me. Every time I see my grandmother, I thank her. End quote. Nevertheless, Louise couldn't protect Penny every time. One day, unfortunately, Penny got mixed up in a robbery outside his cousin's house. Some guy basically robbed his cousin and shot Penny. It ended up hitting his foot and broke three of his metatarsal bones, and Penny actually had to pray. He was on the ground with the gun pressed up against him. He had to pray that the robber didn't shoot him. That's gotta be traumatic. Thankfully, he wasn't shot again, but the injury in his foot prevented him from playing basketball for some time. He eventually got back on the court and back to being the best in his neighborhood, and he wasn't alone on that court. He had family with him. You see, Penny may never have had any biological siblings, but he had two friends that could pass for brothers. One of them was Lamarcus Golden, but there was one particular guy who is the reason Penny is a coach today, and his story is a pretty touching one, and he was more than a brother anybody could ask for. That person was Desmond Merriweather. Desmond Scott Merriweather, or Des as he's popularly called, was born two years after Penny on August 31st, 1973. Des and Penny had known each other since elementary school, but would later discover that they were actually distant cousins. They also had similar upbringings. Both their fathers were absent and their mothers were away for some time. Only difference was Des's grandma died early and he only got to spend about a year with her. So the street took him in and raised him. Criminals became his father figures, and it would seem like he was going to become a criminal himself, but Des was different, mature to the point of knowing what was right from wrong. It's no wonder his high school coach gave him the nickname Manchild. He meant that in the best way. It also helped that he was an athlete and a very good one at that, and in Binghampton, kids like that are not forced into gangs. Kids like Des and Penny were an exception, treasures if you will, in the community. They all played basketball in the gym, at the community center, or the outside courts at their school. However, Penny was the only one who would make it to the NBA, while Des eventually became a coach and a community hero of sorts before something tragic happened. Nevertheless, this was how most of Penny's first 14 years in life were spent, with his closest friend Des, and of course, good old Grandma Louise. Louise, in her part, had loved him deeply, and was his foundation and guide. She was basically everything that Penny knew. I know we haven't really talked about Penny's mom for a while. Well, that's because she was still on tour this whole time. She eventually did come back, though. For better or worse? Well, let's find out. Faye finished her music career, came back to Binghampton, and got a house in the Red Oak Projects. 
Penny, who was 15 years old at the time, would join her, and they would subsequently move to a bigger apartment, which was a duplex in Tillman Cove. It was revealed that when Penny left Louise to live with his mom, he felt an emptiness that he tried to fill by playing more basketball. He still had the chance to visit his grandmother, but he said things were different. Though he was comfortable, he didn't entirely like the transition from his grandmother to his mom. He deeply missed Grandma Louise, and as you can imagine, he was closer to her than his mother. He really liked their conversations and her fortitude, and he would later comment about that, saying, quote, It was very difficult because my mom was all over the place. Even though I had moved back in with my mom, it was much easier to get into trouble. My grandmother was very strict, my mom was way more lenient, so I could have gone into more trouble, but what my grandmother instilled in me stayed with me, so I didn't really do anything out of the norm." End quote. But with grandma's lessons already installed in him, Penny continued to chase his dreams and his mother supported him in the best ways that she could by attending his games. In any case, Faye became another influence in Penny's life, and he became a lucky child with basically two mothers who both loved him dearly even though Faye had left him years prior. It's no wonder why Penny didn't complete college because he was worried he would never get a chance to repay his mom and his grandmother for all that they had done for him. So he quickly opted to play in the NBA. Grandma Louise and Faye were both present at the 1993 NBA draft that saw him get picked as the third overall pick by the Golden State Warriors. And on that draft day, he promised his grandma that he was going to complete his education, and eventually he did that in 2003. While it's not exactly clear when it happened, Louise Hardaway had died when she was 95 years old, so she lived a pretty good life. As for Faye Hardaway, the last time Penny had said anything about her was on Instagram on May 12, 2019 during Mother's Day. Nothing else about Faye has hit the spotlight ever since. But aside from eventually losing Grandma Louise, Penny has also suffered a terrible loss some years ago, except that this one came with a huge career decision for him. Due to the demands of life and his pro career, Penny and Dez weren't in touch for some time, but in October 2010, Penny received a phone call that Dez had stage 4 colon cancer and was in the hospital asking for him. The last time they had even seen or heard from each other was about 3 or 4 years before, and now he was lying in bed, looking really emaciated and frail. They prayed together and tried to catch up, but Dez usually took the conversation to the Leicester Middle School basketball team he coached. He had started as a volunteer coach for the team in 2008 when the team was in shambles with an abysmal 3-23 record and the players performed poorly in life and academics. But Dez transformed the team and the following season they won more than 20 games and made it to the state playoffs. But only a little bit later he was diagnosed with cancer. Fortunately, Dez recovered reasonably after surgery and was able to actually leave the hospitals to celebrate his 38th birthday alongside his son Nick, whom he actually shares a birthday with. But he still had to undergo chemotherapy. But even with the chemo, Dez still coached the team while Penny assisted with his finances. Sometimes Penny also made it to team practice on Dez's plea, mostly to teach the youngsters a few NBA tricks. Eventually, Penny would become his assistant coach, and together they led the team to three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state titles. But as you can imagine from stage 4 cancer, it eventually took its toll on Dez, and even though he remarkably lived for quite a while after he got diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer, he finally died in February of 2015, and Penny and him reportedly got to say I love you one more time. Penny was completely shattered, but he also knew he couldn't just let his friend's hard work go to waste. So, faced with another important life decision, he turned to words his grandmother had spoken to him many years before when she said, quote, Do for your community, do for your people, do what God puts in your heart. End quote. Penny Hardaway became the head coach for the Leicester Middle School basketball team and remained so until he was assigned as the head coach for the Tigers basketball team at the University of Memphis, which was his alma mater. His coaching career may have hit the spotlight a lot recently, but one thing that has evaded the prying eyes of people is Penny's love life. Penny Hardaway has probably kept his love life away from the public eye because of an incident that happened many years ago. In 2000, something happened between him and an ex-partner, Latarsha McRae. McRae had reportedly been his girlfriend from high school. Together, they had a daughter, Latanfernie Hardaway, on July 30th, 1992, 
But according to Penny, he and McRae had fallen out a long time ago, and when he tried to establish a relationship with his daughter, that was when things got out of hand. She subsequently charged him with intimidation through the Paradise Valley Town Attorney's Office. In her complaint, McRae had disclosed that Penny had shouted at her while holding a gun without actually pointing it at her. Penny, in his defense, said it was a misunderstanding as he was quoted as saying, I've always said from the beginning that I was innocent and I had no intentions of intimidating anybody with any weapon at all. It was a misunderstanding. The case was settled eventually. Penny Hardaway reportedly dated two other women, Dion and Nikki Ward, on separate occasions and had children with them. However, the details of these relationships in specifics are not really known. However, he is reportedly married to a Mary McDonnell, but, but the details of their partnership are also locked away. Penny may never have posted about his love life, but he makes an exception for his children. Latanferny seemed to have gotten her name from the combination of both of her parents' names, Anferny and Latarsha. Aside from the legal case between her parents that brought her into the limelight, Latanferny has kept away from the public eye until her father brought her back with a Twitter post. On September 21st, 2012, Penny tweeted, Please follow my daughter, at Latanferny. She is a beautiful person. Since that announcement, she has been mostly active on Instagram with her 29,000 followers. According to her profile, she is the CEO of LHX Collection, which is a brand that deals in the sales of jewelry and watches. She also runs a vlog on YouTube, but only has three posts on there. And finally, according to her Instagram, she is a mother of a son, but nothing is known about him. Penny's other daughter, Layla, is completely off the radar, but his two sons are hard to miss as they have been following in their father's footsteps. Jaden Hardaway was born in Memphis on July 16, 1999 to Nikki Ward and Penny Hardaway. He was raised mainly by his mother in Miami until he moved to Memphis to play under his dad's tutelage. He is a 6'5 guard currently playing under his father for the Memphis Tigers basketball team, and according to Penny, Jaden is a miracle because he was born autistic, but he could still play basketball. In 2020, Penny revealed during a radio show how his son overcame his autism. Jaden was born autistic, and that was the autism game. So he overcame autism, and he's really just a walking miracle with everything he had going on. So that was really a thing between father and son. Jaden is not the best player on his team, but he seems devoted to the game and has been improving over the years. Anybody who makes a college basketball team is very talented. In the 22-23 season, he had a career high in points per game of 5.4. The previous year, it was 2.9. He's also shot a pretty respectable 43.2% from the field with a free throw percentage of 80.8%, which is an improvement of 37.9% and 84.6% respectively the previous year. Penny's youngest son Ashton is also playing under his father's tutelage. It is not clear when Ashton was born, but he is a half-brother of Jaden. He was a four-star recruit out of high school after averaging 10 points per game and 2.8 rebounds per game. He also led his high school team, Duncanville High School in Texas, to a 35-1 record. He also played alongside Bronny James and Justin Pippen for Sierra Canyon. And he recently just signed to play college basketball for the Memphis Tigers under his dad, much like his half-brother. Penny is delighted to have him, especially for his range, and he was quoted as saying, he's, to me, arguably one of the top shooters in the country. I'd say one of the top three shooters in the country in his class, if not number one. That's his thing. He has a gift. Well, we can get hyped that maybe Penny Hardaway's son will become a basketball player in the NBA in his own right, it's possible, and the odds are actually pretty good. There's a lot of NBA players today who had a dad who played in the NBA themselves, so it'll be cool to see. And if you want to check out another video where the basketball player in question has a son who's already an NBA champion, check out this video right here.